So, hello everyone, and hello everyone on the street. Um, I'm going to talk about the future of Pillow. Um, it's going to be fire, it's one thing for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I am one of the Pillow core team members. Um, I created the notifications package and I've been working with the uh, other team members to uh, make V3 even better than the current V2 version. Um, I do some consulting on filament and I'm creating some SaaS related to SaaS. So if you're interested in building software as a service, um, be sure to follow the stuff uh, around filament and the stuff. Um, that's me. So like Tibetan told you, currently filament is mostly an admin panel with separate packages for forms, labels and notifications. These can also be used outside of the filament admin panel. So if you're building a user-facing site, uh, an application, a product, a SaaS, whatever, you can use just a notifications package to save you a lot of time building pop-up notifications, for example. Um, but we had seen a lot of people using the admin panel for user-facing products as well. So we were questioning, is this something like a use case we should support? And eventually we thought, yeah. So for V3, these are some of the packages. Uh, so as you can see, there's quite some new ones. So the admin panel will be an app. And the main difference is that instead of having just the login for admins, you can define multiple contexts where you can say, okay, sign in on this path for the admin, where the admin can manage the whole product, uh, our user, for example, and the user sign in uh, on a different context, and you can share some configuration uh, between those, like branding, uh, where you can essentially make it completely separate uh, applications. Um, so it's super flexible. Forms and tables will mostly be the same, but just way more powerful. Uh, same for notifications, actions as Peter Dunn shortly showed you already um, have been a thing in forms of tables already. Um, tables, I mean, actually. But they have been separated into a separate package, which allows you to use them just like I said with notifications in non filament applications as well, which is super powerful. Um, and I think that's the thing we as filament team members are most excited about. So I will demo, um, give a demo on how you can use those actions outside the filament context. So you can essentially replace every single instance of a button or a link in your application by a um, declaratively defined action class um, with filament. Um, widgets will also be extracted into a new package. An info list will be um, like a few pages in an admin panel, and you can use all of those outside the filament app as well. So let's dive into actions. So um, I'm going to build on what Rowan showed you um, by LiveWire. So you have a list of nodes where you can search uh, on nice, um, but it would be nice to have some actions. Uh, so you can upload the notes, download the notes, record the notes if they're inappropriate, uh, for example, or um, share. So let's go into the list notes file. What you can do with the actions is define functions for your actions. So I'm going to show you step by step how this works. Um, so you create a function, public function, upload action. And from here we return from an action. And name it the same name. Alright, so we got this. This now. Then if we go to the list notes delay file, so the view, um, we want to use this action in this position. Because like here. Sure. So how you do this is very simple. You just echo it out. So we name the method upload action, 
and then there's a magic property on the class called a production. There it is. Um, it doesn't do anything yet. Automatically takes the label of uh, the name of the method, uh, the name of the action I mean. Oops, keyboard setup. Sure. Um, so, we want to make this into an icon button. So let's first add an icon. Hero icon. I think I use arrow up. Arrow up. And we go here. Boom. There's an icon. You can also change the positioning of the icon. Say after. Oops. Go find it. Um, so you can basically, instead of creating HTML components, writing a button in HTML, you can just create the method in PHP and keep your layout really clean. Um, I'm going to remove the icon position for now because I just want it to be an icon button without a label. So we can change icon button met um, method on there and there we have it. Um, let's see, what are we going to do for the outro? Let's just give a quick look in the complete component to save some time. I just quickly copy over the action. So, you can define some PHP code to be executed. So, let's just dump in the something in here. Why is Copilot missing? Yeah. So when you click the action now, boom, it executes the PHP code that we have written. So I copy that line. Sure. So what we want to do is upload the action uh, that we, uh, sorry, upload the node that we click the action for. So we have to receive in the play view the action because now it's just uh, sorry, the node I'm messing up, the name. Um, so you can do it like this and then in here say node. As we're looking through the nodes here, we can access the node variable and get the ID. So now, when we go into the action, we can accept the arguments here. And since we pass node as an argument, I then find the node by its ID and implement it. That's just basic letter of uh, code. So if everything works fine, and we click this button now, we should see the vote count is implemented for that uh, option. And as they are ordered by vote count, you can see if I upvote this one out, the order will change. And that just happens automatically, magically with Wi-Fi. So that's all super cool, if you ask me at least. Um, we can do a similar thing for downvoting. I'll just copy that one from here, because otherwise you'll just be looking at the same thing again. Um, And some cool stuff you can do uh, out of the box is say, of course, we get added to the lane first. Um, we send away. Oops. Boom, works. To show as an example, I want to be sure that a user doesn't accidentally downvote a node. So, usually you create a whole modal component and say, hey, are you sure you want to downvote this node confirmation? It takes quite some time to do it manually. In Filament, with Filament Actions, all that's required is chaining exactly code by the thanks for enable. 
required confirmation. And if you do that, oops, then we'll pop up mode saying, hey, are you sure? You cancel it and won't execute the action. If you confirm, boom, it does. So that's all convenient features that will save you a lot of time um, compared to without them manually. Okay, the next um, actions I wanted to demo are share actions. So actions don't have to execute PHP code, they can also be linked. So essentially you could replace every single HTML button or link in your whole product, uh, whole project, by filling the actions. I'm gonna copy this one over because it's got some stuff that I never remember by heart. Um, Oops. I got it, it's going reasonably smooth on someone else's laptop still. Um, yeah, so now we have uh, an email share action. So what I want to do is when you click the button and you open your email uh, application and share the name of the note and the link to it. So we have a route named node view, um, and we pass it. We're accepting the arguments again, and finding the node, and then since we do this, it automatically recognizes, hey, it should not be a button, but it should be the A tag in HTML. So it makes it a link. So if I echo that one out here, it should stop like this. Email share action. Sure, so now it's the default button still because I didn't compare it now. Can I open your email, bro? Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you. Oh, we'll see. Uh, oh my ah, it works. So it just adds a link in there. Nice. Um, as it should. Don't say it, please. Okay, um, but we want to have multiple share actions. Imagine you want to share to, say, WhatsApp as well, using the WhatsApp uh, web API. Similar thing, um, just for the demo, I'm going to copy it over. This is not the most important part that I want to show. Um, anyways. And you can configure the link to be open in a new tab if you like. And it's just simple, define you should open a new tab uh, parameter, set it to true. And so that would work. Just not opening your personal WhatsApp and everything on screen. <laughs> um, okay, but as you can see, this is quite crowded. We got to clean up this UI again. So what you can do on filament is group actions, and what it does is create a dropdown component where every action is then automatically configured as a list item in that dropdown. So there's nothing special um, required on the action method. I'm just going to show you how. So we created a function um, which we call share action group, I think. Sure. And we return an action group from here. And I'm not sure if this is correct. Maybe it is. I'm not sure if it's reading it from this file or it probably is. <laughs> Let's just copy it over. Okay, so we're configuring just like you see with forms and columns and all these filament things. Um, you can create an action group and pass it the actions, just like you'd echo them out in late. Um, receive the note here, and this is just a method we can call on the live our component in update view. So instead of calling these like this, I can say, this 
share actions group and I'll say no and remove these that should work if everything goes fine share actions group let's check I need some share actions of course I need it like there we go boom and they're all in a group now so that's all that you need to do to have an action be displayed differently depending on the context, if it's in a group or if it's not in a group. Um, so that's all super easy in Filament, and as you can see, um, the link is still fine, same thing. Last action I want to show you is some more advanced stuff. Um, I'm going to try to do a part of this by heart, if I remember. So, as I said, we want to report action. So, users should be able to report a node if it's inappropriate. So, let's create a report action. And return the same thing. So, let's make what I want here. That's it. So, we have this. Okay, sure. Let's make a nice, um, add an icon. Let's say, for icon, add a flag. Sure. And we want to the icon button because we don't want it to be too bulky. Okay, here we go. Um, we want the color, I didn't show it for the down code action. We want the color to be different too. Um, because we want to show this dangerous action. Okay, it's easy. Just change color. Danger. <laughs> and you're done. So this doesn't execute anything yet. What we do want is to pop up a modal where the user can say, hey, this is why I report this action, and type some additional information. So we just create a form method and say, Let's see, this go by the right. No. Uh, this doesn't make sense. So we can create a radio component element. And um, this doesn't make sense. So now, if we click it, boom. OK, we haven't defined any options yet, sure. So, Let's say the user can choose from spam, sure. Fine. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, we want to make this required because we have to know the reason and additional information is optional. So we just change required on the field um, and then you can see it's required. So if we submit it now, validation over to the model, nothing special to be done manually. Add text area for say the message, which is optional. Cool, there we go. Then to process this, Oops. we have the action method again. Um, let's just write it out like this. And we have read, we can receive the data from the form that I just wrote and the arguments pass into the action. So if I dump and die the data, please go by the yeah. Sure. Um, let's see, yeah, this should be fine. So let's mark this inappropriate and blah blah blah. Everything works there. Cool. So let's just create a new report. We've got a report model in the project. So report, say report reason is data reason. Yeah, makes sense. Fine. Um, then we've got to set the note, which is the report note associate. And we have the note in the arguments. Um, arguments by note, this should be fine. And save it. So we 
save as now. We get no confirmation, so just check it manually. Let's open another terminal tab. Um, if you are some tinker, and get the latest um, report. And there it is. But it would be nice to show the user some confirmation, right? Because it's not obvious that it's saved correctly now. So here's where I can demo some notification stuff. So the notification package from Filoni, you can use it anywhere as well. So we create a notification and uh, give a title. Um, report submitted. No, submitted. No report. And send it. So when we report a note now, boom, we get that. Okay, but we want to show that it's successful, sure. So let's make that a little more obvious. Success, and then it automatically sets the. Um, right, let's just add somebody first to read Yeah, sounds good. Go by it. Yes. And we report it. Boom, there you go. So this makes it, you can just check if there's anything I missed. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, this actually nice. This makes it super easy to create interactive applications um, without a lot of mess in your blade files because as you can see, this is basically everything required in the blade file. So these couple lines, that's all you need on the front end and everything is defined nicely um, in your uh, library component. So as you can see, those actions can get quite big. Um, you can extract them to classes and reuse them so you can make them kind of uh, make actions inherit other actions and it's just super powerful. Um, you can also change the modal width, the modal heading, um, so it's all super flexible. Um, that's the part I want to show for actions. Um, personally, I'm quite hyped about actions. Um, in one of my SAS projects, I recently converted every single button in the project to a film and action. Maybe that's a bit too much, but I don't think so. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, stay tuned for film v3. We'll be sharing more on the way, uh, getting it ready. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer.